Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived at our day one of our Dingbats fanzine project. This is uh, a fanzine such as we made in the video yesterday. Uh, this is one that I was playing with and this is the type of thing that we're going to work on today which is called an embedded letter. Okay. One thing I want to show you is that I decided to use something a little bit, um, I wanted something brown, so I got a piece of cardstock. It's actually square and not rectangular. And I wanted to show you that this, this uh, fanzine thing works no matter what size your paper is, whether it's square or rectangular. The difference that I have is that uh, mine on this are a little bit longer than the others. And that's fine. Uh, I think that's why in his definition, Brian says that they're varying sizes. So I just wanted to show you that this would work with any type of paper that I'm using, but I have folded it exactly the same way we did yesterday. Okay. So I am going to, this is the reason that we wrote the, the names on each of these sections yesterday and I'm going to start with my embedded letter on the front cover section okay so what I'm going to do is uh, keep an eye on this section right and I'm going to I'm going to fold mine in half but what I have is this section right here and I've got my finger and thumb on it let me open it up and just make sure okay this is my front cover section all right now you can uh, fold this out so that it is flat or you can leave it um, you can leave it folded up just whatever way is going to make the surface easy for you to work on so embedded letters is what we're going to be working on today this is a technique that is taught by Maria Thomas at least this version there are many versions of embedded letters out there and no one way is right uh, the first step to this is you may want to use a pen with a nib size that's a little bit larger than a zero one or and you may use of course whatever pen you like it doesn't have to be one of these uh, pigma microns uh, that Zentangle tends to choose. It can be any any pen that works smoothly for you and works well with the paper. The reason these are so nice, uh, along with several other brands, is because of the archival ink, and it doesn't um, it doesn't um, oh what am I trying to say? It doesn't spread if it gets wet. Um, it doesn't um, go through to the other side like a sharpie will. Uh, it's not alcohol based, so there's no smell. Uh, so it's a really nice fine line of pens if you if you are looking for something like that uh, But there are also great pens like the Copic multiliners or um, I'm sure there are many other types that are very good If you guys have a favorite pen that you use that is different from the micron Drop me a comment and let me know what it is I mean, I know there's a lot of good brands out there and a lot of you from around the world have access to things that maybe we don't get in the US and so I'd be I would love to hear from you what types of things that you use all right so now for your embedded letter I want you to choose a letter I'm going to choose my first uh, initial in my name so I'm going to use the letter C but you may use whatever letter you like it can be your name it can be a D, D for dingbats or a Z for Zentangle or whatever makes you happy so we're going to, I'm going to start with a 08 and I'm going to draw in my initial letter. Now you may do this in whatever way you want, but for this uh, embedded letter technique to work really well, you want your initial letter to be a simple shape that represents the letter shape, if that makes sense. And since I'm doing a C shape, I don't want to get uh, really uh, frilly with the way that I draw my C. I don't want to do a big cursive with, you know, uh, accents and frills and that sort of thing because when we start adding in the embedded or adding in the extra stuff, um, the letter is going to get lost and what you ideally want is for there to be a hint enough of that letter in there for you to know it's a letter but not so much that it's, you know, overwhelming, if you will. So, 
I'm going to start with a nice, let's see, okay, with a nice large C here. And I'm going to go ahead and use my black. Uh, I may come in and use a brown micron uh, for some of the decorating around, but we're going to find out. I love the look of black and brown on brown paper or tan paper. Okay. By the way, if you like doing tan paper but you can't afford a nice tan paper, I want to encourage you to stop throwing away your boxes. If I, by boxes, I mean uh, if you have uh, prepackaged food, like for those in the U.S., like pizza boxes. Um, particularly the the insides of the DiGiorno pizza boxes make really nice drawing. Um, also, my kiddo loves Orville Redenbacher popcorn, and the insides of those are really great drawing. They have a nice tan um, surface, with a little bit of marbling on there. So, just some thoughts for inexpensive recycling ways to get some cool paper to work on or a cool surface. So I'm going to, I really am trying to get this a nicer shape up here. And so I'm going a little bit thick initially. You don't have to do it this way. You can make your, your shape less than this. But since we're working, or at least I am working on a fairly large surface, we're gonna go ahead I'm going to go ahead and make this um, so that it's a nice, thick, pleasing shape. Hopefully, pleasing for me. Or at least satisfactory. Sometimes on these types of things, you're not going to get perfection, but um, trust me when I say the rest of this is going to work out really well. Now, if you're working on a tile that is much, much smaller than the surface that I'm using here, you're going to want to go smaller and probably more thin. That's my sort of wonky little C. Yeah? Okay. Now, the next step is going to be to ara your letter, okay? So I'm going to start out with my 01 in black here. And if this is too thin to go with this uh, thicker line, then I'll switch it out to the 08. And just a nice simple aura. Taking your time. And a tip. If you have trouble getting your lines to, sorry, getting, trouble getting your lines to match up when you shift your position. Leave a little gap there. You can either go back later and and uh, very lightly fill it in, or you can, if it doesn't quite match up like this, you can just leave it blank. And trust me, a little gap in the line is not nearly as noticeable as a big overlap. So, just a thought for you today. On days when I am particularly shaky with my hands, I frequently use this technique. 
so that uh, I can mitigate the kinds of mistakes or problems maybe that I have. And I really don't want to call them mistakes. They're just a byproduct of what goes on with me or you physically. And if you get used to it, it kind of becomes, it's like the variable line weight, which is one reason I'm pretty good at that because it's something that I was already doing. And it can be a very cool effect. Oh, Simba says hey and woof to all you doggy friends. By the way, Simba loves to bark at cats too, so if you have a kitty friend you'd like to introduce us to, drop me a comment. Now, if, he, if when he barks, your cats go running from the room, uh, I do apologize for that. He really is fascinated with cats. He just... He just finds them on his territory to be very upsetting. And I've never let him loose with a cat, so I don't know what he would do, but I'm not going to find out. That would be awful. All right. So this is what we have to begin with. Just a nice thick letter and an aura. Okay. Here comes the magic. All right. Now. This part is very intuitive, meaning it's very much up to you and the way that you perceive this process and what you find aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. Um, so what you want to do now is pick some spots and make a little fescue type shape coming out as a decoration here and there just in ways that you think would be pretty. And let me give you some examples of what I think would, would work for this. Uh, you want to take off from your existing line. And make a nice little fescue shape. little decoration coming out like that. can look like whatever you want. And they can go whatever direction you want. They can curve in whatever way you want. You know, changing it up and uh, making them go sort of opposite of each other uh, will help get you a wilder look. And if you keep them very symmetrical and all going the same, same way, you will get a different kind of look. So, you know, the sky's the limit here. Let your creativity be your guide. If your lines get out of control or something, don't sweat it and try not to fix it unless it's just, you know, I understand that, that urge to fix things that you feel like are going wrong. So I'm not going to yell at you, but try to leave it because, again, the fixing frequently uh, brings more focus to the issue than it would have if you would leave it alone, which is something that is very hard for me. Okay, so you want to find a line that you can follow a curve along, as in here. See, even though my things are pointing different directions, I have still started by, by traveling the line first and then coming out. So I think here, I'm going to go a little bit opposite. A good example of not fixing things yeah okay and so here I think I want to hmm uh, let's do something completely different here and point this in and again, you cannot do this wrong. All right? You, whatever you come out with is absolutely perfectly fine. Um, 
I'm not really excited about that one. That's all right. We're going to, by the time we finish with the, with the embellishing on this, you will not even notice the um, parts that you don't like. All right. And I might put one more, and I think I will make this crazy one. And really make a long one out of that. Because I can, and there are no mistakes. So this is what I have after my first pass around with my little fescue embellishments, okay? And so now the next step is very, very simple. We're going to aura all of this, all right? Now take your time with your aura. Take your time, shift your, shift your paper so that you have a comfortable position with your hand. The more time and willing that you are to be precise, Oh, I forgot something. Oh, no. I forgot something. Okay. Uh, you want to round here. So, rounding in, as it pertains to Zentangle anyway, is just um, removing the sharp corners by rounding it out a little bit with your ink pen. Okay? So, that one's a little thick, but... We're going <clears> to <throat> leave it. If only I were as good at taking my advice as I were at giving it out. You guys are nice to put up with me. All right. Here we go. I'm not making too big a muck of this. The day is young. The day is young. After the rounding, which I did my best not to overdo, except for one spot, I feel okay about that. And you know what? I am even feeling pretty zen about my little wiggles here along this R line. I think that's absolutely okay. Thanks again, Susan Reynolds, for helping me out with that attitude of mine. All right, here we go with the Ara. I do my best to take my time. Stay relaxed. And not sweat the small stuff. I almost got in a hurry there. Taking my time, this is something I really struggle with on Aura's. I never really thought I was an impatient person until I got into Zentangle. But, it turns out I am not so patient as I thought. So this is an example of what I mean by taking your time. If I had been taking my time here, I would have had a better uh, curve here. But, again, I'm not trying to criticize myself, I'm just saying as an example that slowing down and not being in a hurry as you do this is going to make a huge difference to your outcome. Hmm. 
We are once again boiling in the heat here in Oklahoma. Simba are both hanging in there. I am melting into little puddles every day and complaining all the time. <laughs> I know some of you in this area can feel me. I know I have several of you guys from Kansas and Texas and New Mexico. And those of you in Florida probably are suffering as well. I don't know what the temperature stays there, but I know that the humidity is just really challenging this time of year. And I think the only thing worse than living in this area is living someplace where it's just this hot but more humid. So anyway, okay, enough about the weather. This is my next pass with an Aura. Now, it, this process has an ugly stage and we're in it right now, okay? So keep going. Now we're going to take another pass at rounding. So in each area where it comes to a corner, such as here and here, we're going to put a slight bit of rounding in, just like that. And I am going to try not to let myself get out of control with it. It's very difficult for me because I like for things to be perfect. And so if I can relax just a little bit and allow things to be imperfectly perfect, if you will, it could be all right. Now, if I had had a sharp turn here, I would have rounded that, but I didn't. I might. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that anymore. Okay, so here we need a little bit. And here. Well, I meant well. Don't fix stuff, Cindy. There. All right, in here. Now, you don't have to do the rounding, but it really is important as a separating factor for the auras that we're gonna be adding, okay? All right, so a little bit there. A little bit here. Oh, I was sneaky on that one, wasn't I? And all right. Okay, so this is what I have after my second rounding. All right, now we're going to continue to do this process. You do not have to add these little uh, fescue things each time or you can add one or two each time in varying places just to keep the interest alive and after each pass you're going to round now you can make these as ornate or as simple as you like i think i am going to leave these two as my only addition for this run and I'm going to make another Aura run, okay? Taking my breaths. Taking my time. Oops. Starting to jerk. See, the rounding is going to soften some of those spots. So their whole effect is going to be more generally rounded. I guess that makes sense. Let's see. A 
probably just start rounding as I go if I can remember. Just like that, I sort of smoothed out that odd angle there. Remembering to turn your paper as you go so that your lines are more consistent. 90% of people do much better is if you are drawing your pen towards you, but I'm not going to say that that is true for everyone because I know it is not strictly true for me. So I will just say make it comfortable for your hand so that you feel you have the highest amount of control with your pen. making sure that you take the time to breathe and you don't rush your process. I was reading something yesterday where someone was challenging the philosophy that Zentangle has of no mistakes and they were saying that's just a silly statement because there were mistakes everywhere in art. And <laughs> my response to that would be that the person that made that statement does not truly understand the Zentangle process, the method a lot of people think that Zentangle is about the patterns and pattern drawing, and I respectfully disagree. Even though this is termed an art form, I believe that Zentangle is about the Zen, and the tangling is the, is the process that they use to get you to the Zen. And so I believe that the point of Zentangle is the Zen, and the art is a bonus to that. So that's my two cents. I'll just stick it in and leave you with it. So on this round, oh, I need to do my rounding in a couple more spots. Um, all right, I don't think that really needs any. Um, right here. the no mistakes philosophy is is to remove the worry about perfection from the creative process it is to relax and free your creative mind um, for me the reason I could never doodle like that was because I was not able to lose myself in the doodling process. I never knew what to draw. I never knew, you know, my mind just didn't, you know, pop out ideas like that. And so that was always really frustrating.
All right, now I've done my rounding. And so I'm going to decide whether I want to add one or two more little tendrils here. Now, this is one of those processes that if you think it's you're done, you think it's full enough or too full or whatever, and you want to stop, please stop. Uh, that is your signal that you are finished. Um, if you feel like I do right now and that it needs more, just keep going. This is what we're going to do. We're going to ara. We're going to round the corners add the little extra fescue decorations and Ara again rounding as we go. And there you are. Okay. So let's Ara again. Taking our time. done. Now one other consideration you're going to want to have as you create this. You can create this design going out to the edges if that's what you want to do. You do not have to uh, take this to the edges. Um, since this is a dingbats, I thought what I would do is to uh, create a frame that goes around this and I was actually considering having uh, one of these uh, long tendrils go outside the frame. So I'm going to keep auraing this row and uh, we'll make those decisions as we come to them. Alright, I think I'm just going to leave that and round this I really can't say enough about the Dingbats, uh, the Zentangle Dingbats book by Brian Cremens. Uh, for beginners, for intermediate tanglers, for whomever, there are so many great things in that book. I just really, I'm so glad that so many of you have decided to go ahead and purchase it. It's definitely worth every penny. Um, I don't buy books very often, and um, I didn't buy this one either. Um, one of you guys donated it so that we could do this series. And thank you, by the way. And you know who you are. I don't want to embarrass you. But um, it is definitely worth it. It has got so many good ideas. And even though we've been doing this series, I still feel like I have not even begun to scratch the surface of what's truly in there. And that's a really exciting proposition for someone who has a little experience with tangling. Um, you know, so take that for what it's worth. All right, we're getting there. I'm gonna take my time as I get in a hurry. Hmm. All right, and let's see. Taking my time, remembering to breathe. There. Now, 
look at this for a second before I finish this row up. Look at this. Um, do I still see my mistakes? I do, yeah. But I'm pretty sure anybody else looking at this is going to say, ooh, that's so cool looking, and not see them. So, you know, don't despair if you, if you find yourself in a place where you feel like you haven't done a good enough job. Don't start over. Finish, and then decide whether it's worthwhile or not. I cannot tell you how long it took me to get to the point where I could make myself finish things, even though I didn't feel like they were worthy, if you will pardon me using that term. Um, we as artists often get to the place where we are so hypercritical of ourselves and our creations that we forget the overall effect that they can have on other people. And, you know, Yes, in the, Zen in the Zen Tangle community, people are tend to be, not always, but tend to be ultra kind. And, uh, and so you always feel like, oh, they're just being nice, maybe. You know what? Accept the compliments. Say thank you. <laughs> and move on. And believe them. There is too much negativity in this world for us to... Um, you know, float in our own seas of negativity, if you will. Somebody gives you a compliment, thank them, feel good about it, and move on. All right. That was advice that I got from my voice teacher in college before I went um, to Germany. Because I was, of course, just as hypercritical about my singing as I was about um, everything else, pretty much. And so she was the one that backed me up and said, hey, when someone gives you a compliment, whether you think they're right or not, you just say thank you and smile and move on. So there you go. My next two cents for today. Stick around and we may reach a quarter's worth. I don't know. Or, hmm, really can't do that. It's not all of y'all use sense. So this is what I have. I really like the interest that this brought up here. And I like how I came down here. I think I'm going to give this one more aura and then I am going to put in a frame. All right. So one more aura and I don't think uh, I don't think I'm going to add any more tendrils. Maybe. Maybe one more. These remind me of people peacock feathers in the way they sort of stick out. All right. Let's give it a go. Breathe. Relaxing my shoulders. Taking my time. Rounding my edges, turning my paper each time, keeping my hand in a comfortable position for drawing. If you do, if you do a lot of tangling, allow your muscle memory to take over. And just enjoy the process of drawing your pen across paper. This meditational portion of Zentangle is there and available for anything you make.
And you can see why, uh, oops. you can see why um, leaving the center letter bold and simple <laughs> is so important for this because there's so much else going on that you completely lose your letter in this. Now, if that's what you're going for and it's like a secret letter thing, go for it. Uh, that would be actually fun to play around with. So many ideas and so little time. Okay. All right. crazy today. It's all right. There you go. Right. Remembering to turn your paper. Oh, I like this. This turned out really cute, didn't it? We got another rounding spot here. And I'm just going to go around and check and make sure that I did get all my spots. Okay, now I have decided to add a frame to this. And I'm going to change my color here and use brown right so I think I think I'm going to stick with a rectangular shape or maybe an oval I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a rectangular shape and I'm gonna start up here and I want this to go on the outside or go over the frame or overlap the frame so I think I'm going to start uh, right here and make a straightish line over here and then I'm going to line straight down And then I'm going to let that overlap here too. Trying to get my lines <laughs> connected correctly. All right, now let's take a look at this. Um, so I think I will have my outside edge go right here. And I'm just gonna bring that down. Let these meet up like this. And this is not exactly even, but I'm, I'm okay with it definitely hand-drawn 
I have to say, I wasn't really happy with my last design, and so I'm determined to sort of not overstretch myself. Take my advice that I gave to the beginners, and you know, maybe after I get more comfortable with dingbats, then I can go exploring. working fairly well. Except I meant for this to go outside of this, but that's alright. This is going to work. Okay. So my result for this, I like. And then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do inside here, and I will probably do it in brown. I will probably either, um, I'm going to do a embellishment here, and keep it very simple. Do it on all my sides. I am very, very tempted to tipple the inside of this. What do you guys think? I'm just going to go for it. Alright, I'm going to speed this part up for you. See you on the other side. So this is my dingbats design. When I go in and shade this, I'm going to be putting graphite all around in the tipple areas to sort of drop those into the background and bring the letter shape forward. I really like how it turned out. I hope you guys have enjoyed this project and learning a little bit about embedded letters and some of the things you can do with them. And I hope you will be back tomorrow for another design in our zine project. Thanks for being with me today.